before the end of the year so you could get credit on your taxes. Thanks. All right, good morning, everyone. So this is going to be the last machine in our printed product cell. And this is our Astro. Feel free to step up to the, all the way up so you guys can see what's going on. There's going to be a lot, so I'll do my best to explain as things are happening. So Javon is our uh, application engineer on our Astro. And right now we are producing our first part. So you'll see on our first loading table, our loading station, we have our load unload robot. So what it did, it is picked up our first piece, and what's going to happen is we're going to measure the thickness. So our thickness indicator, just make sure that we have the correct thickness that we have programmed, along with making sure we don't pick up more than one piece at a time as well. So now what it's also doing, it's going to retrieve the next piece. For any of you that have or have not seen the Astro robot or the Astro demo before, one thing that we're showing in this particular demonstration is that Javon had scheduled two different parts to run. And if you, of course, you're not going to be able to see what's going on on his screen, but there is a monitor set up that you can see that he, for the first part that we produced, he had scheduled to run two parts. And we only had one part sitting there. Now what it did is it picked up what is basically just a whiteboard and the load unload robot picked that part up and basically it denoted that it's not another part so we're going to go ahead and switch over to the next program. So it places that uh, unfamiliar part in a secondary location and just knowing that it doesn't see a second part that we had originally scheduled to run. So now on the actual Astro robot we're using uh, we're utilizing the repositioning ripper, which is the piece that just lowered on the left side of the brake. Now what that does, it allows for Astro Robot to reposition itself uh, on the half-completed part. There's also the standalone piece of equipment sitting in front of the brake, which is the repositioning arm. And usually when we have a larger piece of equipment, or a larger piece of material, and the repositioning gripper can't hold all the material at once. The repositioning arm will extend itself out to allow that extra support. So now we complete, completed our first part, and the load unload robot is unloading our first completed part on our unload conveyor. And if we wanted to, we could have a pallet set up. Uh, basically, whatever your footprint is, we could set it up to that. And now we're going to switch over to our next program. And another key thing to keep in mind is, as you saw in the software in the beginning, all our machines, all our NT machines are tied into one. So as soon as we program for our machine, it's sent over through our SDDJ or Central Database Network. And that's where all our equipment is reading the program. So right now, the program is being brought up and it's basically telling all our automation which next scrippers we need to switch out to, which set of tooling we need to switch over to. And you'll see we'll start retrieving the second piece, which is on the second loading station. And if you notice in the beginning as well, the load unload robot will lower itself slowly in the beginning. And as time picks up, as we go ahead and produce more parts that speed will pick up. Now on this next set that we're going to run, Javon has scheduled to run one part, and we have two parts sitting there. So where this comes into play in having the scheduling be an important piece to our process is that sometimes maybe you might produce extra parts or you might forget to bring one over. One may not get produced the correct way you wanted it. And so it will read that and not overproduce parts or not produce the wrong part. And the first part that we actually did then was one of our standard parts that came over from the AML that we developed in the software portion in the beginning as well. So usually 
you there's a problem, I'll tell you what happened. I don't think But I will produce the part for you. So I don't know if this was mentioned in the beginning, um, but one of the cool key parts to this entire cell and the reason we're showing you all the machines within this specific cell is basically because it's called the print product process, just to show you the ease of how flexible and versatile the software along with most of the machines are going from developing our product um, and just how easy it is to make a change and if it comes to producing a prototype which we produce on the laser and getting that from the software translated over to our machines. Alright. If I could do magic, I would right now. But I can't. So, we have to shut down our machine. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just tell you a few other features. We, we'll run the part later as you guys have a chance to walk around on your own. Uh, but just some other key features if you have never seen the Astro demo before. On the left side of the press break, uh, you saw where all the tooling came from. So that's called our ATC or, or automatic tool changer. And so that holds all of our tooling for us. And the benefit behind having the automated tooling system is you had a chance to see also in the PDC on the EML is all our punches and dies are stored within this entire system. So you eliminate the possibility of people stealing tooling from one another, tooling getting lost. It's all retrieved and it's placed back within the same place. Now as you also may have had a chance to see as well, when the Astro Robot forms, it only forms going in the upward motion. Now to compensate as you see uh, on our sample table, there is a part with the uh, internal flange on it. And in order to produce that internal flange, uh, we have to rotate our tooling because of the motion of our robot. So what we do is, if we needed to get an internal flange, if there is one sitting on the table, what would happen is the tooling would be brought all the way down to 